Let's build a battery power synth. Hi, this is Takumi from Electrosmith. Over the past few years, we have seen the release of exciting portable synthesizers like the High Chord and Champi. These instruments contain a rechargeable battery plus an onboard speaker and or headphone out. So musicians can take these instruments on the go and play anywhere, whether in nature or on a long airplane ride. In this video, we're going to cover one of the key components of a portable synthesizer, the rechargeable battery, so that you can start building your very own portable synth. For this project, we'll be using DAISY, an embedded platform for music. DIY synth built with the DAISY seed typically get power through onboard USB port connected to a laptop, since this is how we flash the firmware. This works fine during prototyping, but USB power from a laptop can be a bit noisy, so powering it from another source is crucial. One great power source is connecting a USB power bank's output to DAISY's onboard USB. I use this often whenever I make demo footage to get clean audio without noise from the laptop USB power. The downside is that we have to unplug the battery every time we want to flash new firmware. So the best way for DAISY to be powered is through its voltage input pin. Now we may think that grabbing a lithium ion battery like this and connecting its positive terminal to the VIN pin and negative terminal to ground should do the trick. The issue is that the C's VIN pin requires at least 5 volts, but this battery only outputs 3.7 volts. Also, how do we charge this battery? And how the heck do we turn power on off without needing to plug and unplug the battery repeatedly? This is where PowerBoost 1000C comes in. This breakout board recharges the lithium ion battery and boosts the output of the battery to 5 volts. What's also cool about it is that it has a pin for connecting a switch that can turn the output on off. And the output can switch its power source from the battery to the charging power supply without interruption when we begin recharging. So this breakout board will make it easy to get started on building a DIY portable synth. Our game plan for today is to learn how to wire components to the PowerBoost 1000C to power a simple DIY synth made with DAISY. As for the software portion of this tutorial, we'll keep it simple by flashing an example firmware from the DAISY web programmer. Okay, let's get started. Let's start connecting the electronic components together. We have provided a link in the description where you can get the components you need. First, let's put together the synth. This part is covered in more details during the electronics section of these two videos, so I recommend watching them if you'd like to learn more. We begin by inserting the audio jack and connecting the tip to DAISY's audio out pin and the sleeve to analog ground. After that, bridge the analog and digital grounds together. Then insert a potentiometer and connect its ground pin to ground, VCC pin to DAISY's 3.3V pin, and output to DAISY's ADC6 pin. Key point to remember is that most of DAISY's ADC pins cannot handle above 3.3V, so always connect the sensor to DAISY's 3.3V pin. If we connected it to the 5 volts pin from the breakout board, the sensor can output a maximum of 5 volts which can damage the DAISY seed. Cool, the synth is complete. Let's put together the battery circuit next. First task is to solder header pins to the breakout board so that we can insert it into the breadboard. Just a heads up, header pins were not included in the package, so I have added a link to this item in the components list mentioned earlier. Let's connect the breakout board's 5 volt output pin to DAISY's VIN pin and connect the grounds together. Here's a battery that I will use for this video. It's 2000 mAh, which should be plenty for most synth projects. Current draw is dependent on the firmware and hardware of the synthesizer. For example, a synth with an OLED display plus a bunch of LEDs will draw more current than a synth with just 5 potentiometers. Before connecting the battery, let's add an on-off switch. A useful feature of this breakout board is the enable pin labeled EN here. By default, it is pulled high to the VS pin, which is the low shared output from the battery charger. By connecting this enable pin to ground, the output and the input are disconnected. We can achieve this with a small switch like this one from Adafruit. This switch is symmetric, so we're good to go as long as its legs are connected like this. If you're using a different switch, please read the text shown on screen. If we were to create an inline power switch, then we would have needed a bigger switch that could handle up to 2 amps of current. So this enable pin makes things much easier. Finally, let's connect the lithium ion battery to the JST connector. Please be careful and watch the polarity of the cable. Using the battery from Adafruit is recommended as some third-party batteries may have JST connects wired opposite from the standard. Speaking of staying safe, 
I highly recommend reading Adafruit's documentations regarding safety precautions with lithium-ion battery like this. I'll leave a link in the description. When the battery is connected and the blue LED is on, it means that 5V is being outputted. We can turn the switch off for now. If you didn't see the blue LED lit, flip the switch and check if it does light up. Once you check that, you can turn it off. Now, when we connect the USB power supply, like this one that is recommended by Adafruit, your battery will start charging. We should see a yellow LED light up, which indicates that a battery is being charged. If we turn on the switch while the USB power supply is connected, the synth will be powered by that USB power. But if we only have the battery connected and it's sufficiently charged, then the synth will be battery powered. Okay, let's wait for the battery to fully charge. The green LED will light up once it's done. So, in the meantime, I'm gonna clean my apartment. It is a mess. Alright, I'm back. Apartment's much cleaner, and even better, the battery's all charged up. It only took somewhere between 1.5 hours to 2 hours. It's worth noting that the red LED, which indicates that the battery's running low, did not light up when I first plugged it in. But I still wanted to get it fully charged to make sure that it doesn't get low while filming. Okay, let's turn on the switch. Again, the blue LED indicates that the 5V pin is outputting. We also see the DAISY C's onboard power LED light up, which means it's getting sufficient power. Alright, let's see if we hear a sound. Oh, we haven't flashed the synth program yet. That's embarrassing. So, I actually didn't forget because I wanted to demonstrate that we can flash even while it's powered by the battery. Don't worry about it overheating or anything like that by having two power sources at once. It'll just choose whichever single source that's providing more. Also, we can flash while the battery is being recharged as well. This section is going to be easy since we'll just flash an example firmware from the DAISY web programmer. In Google Chrome, go to flash.daisy.audio. Then click on select an example, choose pod as the platform, and a simple oscillator example. Before flashing a program, we have to put the seed into bootloader mode. Hold down the boot button and also hold down the reset button. Once you release the reset button, you can then release the boot button. Finally, click the flash button. Now we should hear the synth in action. Success! We got ourselves a battery power synthesizer. Okay, we got one of the key components of a portable synthesizer. So what could be added next is an onboard speaker and or headphone out. And once you have the circuit put inside an enclosure, you got yourself a portable synth. I'd love to make videos on these topics in the near future. And if you don't want to use a breakout board, you can certainly look into building your own circuit for the battery. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.